Good morning. I'm Dr. Gregory Fink. I'm chair of the Council for High Blood Pressure Research in the American Heart Association. And we're here at the 2013 scientific sessions of the Council that are sponsored not just by our Council, but also by the Council on Kidney and Cardiovascular Disease. I have with me here this morning uh, Dr. Christopher Wilcox, who is the chair of the program committee for our fall scientific conference, and Dr. Moshe Levy, who is chair of the Council on Kidney and Cardiovascular Disease. We've put together, as always this year, under Dr. Wilcox's leadership, a really exciting program that deals with the basic science and clinical aspects of hypertension, you know, a condition which has an enormous impact on the health of Americans and increasingly people around the world. What I'd really like to do this morning is have Dr. Wilcox highlight for us some of the major uh, activities at the conference this year that would benefit uh, all attendees and hopefully those of you who are view viewing uh, Science News today. So Chris, could we mind going over some of the highlights of the uh, conference that you've got planned for us in the next few days? Thank you, Greg. Yeah. Yes, uh, delighted to do so. So in putting together the meeting, I've had four principles in mind. The first is, and foremost, to continue to showcase the very best science in our field of hypertension and high blood pressure research. And I've been fortunate to chair a number of um, of uh, programs uh, for academic societies. So I'm sort of aware of the quality of science that is presented. And nowhere beats this meeting. It's a very high quality uh, presentation. So the second uh, is to make the meeting friendly and inclusive for the trainees. And that's carrying on a tradition which really I think was uh, started by Rian Tuez and very ably uh, uh, promoted by yourself in recent Thank years. You. So we now have a meeting, uh, not just for the best of the best, but a meeting in which the trainees can really feel they are true participants. And in that regard this year, we continue the uh, tradition of having a trainee only uh, uh, abstract presentation, poster presentation on the first night and we've put uh, special extra funds this year into that um, meeting so as to provide a nice uh, food and drink to make it an excellent, a celebratory event, yeah. which it sh surely should be. Sure, absolutely. The uh, trainees had suggested that they would like to also have their own oral presentations, and we were very happy to oblige, uh, and in so doing, we slightly changed the program so there'll be more emphasis on oral presentations mm -hmm. and correspondingly a little less on the post. So uh, I feel that the trainees, together with their mixer, their social events, are very well catered mm -hmm. for and I hope they're going to enjoy the meeting uh, as they have in past years. <clears throat> so uh, a third principle is to improve the representation and the value of the meeting for clinical investigators such as Moshe here, um, and uh, because uh, this, the council is preeminent, no question about it, worldwide uh, in attracting the very best basic science, and has been for some time, but we've been uh, slightly faltering in our mission to attract the very best clinical well, science in the right. discipline. So this year, one of the two workshops is specifically on novel mechanisms to measure quantitative variables relating to high blood pressure, circulation, brain function, and kidney function non-invasively in man. And uh, I hear that the workshops have got a good registration. Yes, they have. So I hope very much that that will be successful. Uh, we also have the uh, uh, our, our number one award here uh, the uh, Award for Excellence in Hypertension Research yeah. is going, perhaps a little unusual for this council, to a brilliant clinical investigator who has led a very influential um, uh, controlled uh, clinical trial, the first trial for prevention of hypertension, cure of hypertension, I should put it that way, using radiofrequency ablation of the renal nerves. So Murray Esler will receive that prize and I programmed the first talk 
in the work in the other workshop by Jerry de Bona, uh, a world mm. expert on renal yeah. nerves, uh, to put his uh, discovery in context. Yeah. So uh, the fourth principle is networking and social interaction. Uh, science is hard. Uh, often one spouse is, okay. is uh, favored and the other is at home. Um, uh, and uh, frankly, <clears throat> in this day when it's hard to get grants, uh, it helps enormously for the young people and some of the old ones like us mm -hmm. uh, to have real friendships amongst our colleagues and it enriches our lives. One of the strengths of the council has always been the way in which the council has provided um, lunches for everybody uh, throughout and a very special dinner, it's the uh, uh, Excellence in Hypertension Award dinner. So this provides us with excellent opportunities to mix up, get to know each other, establish new friendships and reacquaint ourselves with old. And in that regard the uh, trainees had their own special party, a mixer party, uh, funded in large part by donations from the elderly group, like myself, <laughs> uh, okay. who recognize the importance uh, of uh, making them feel at home truly in our society. So overall, I, I feel um, excited about this conference. I believe we've done what we should do in pre preparation, and I'm hopeful that the delegates will uh, get as much pleasure from it and knowledge um, as I believe uh, is possible given the programming we've been able to achieve. Chris, I really want to thank you for putting together what I think everyone has agreed now. I've talked to many people already. I really agree that this is a first-class program, an exciting program, a very timely program, and one that I hope will attract especially more of our clinical colleagues to uh, pay attention to what we're doing and hopefully attend our meeting. You know, I just want to turn my attention briefly to Dr. Levy you know, the, kidney and, uh, the Council for Kidney and Cardiovascular Disease has been a co-sponsor of this conference for a number of years now. We've been trying to get more participation by people in your council in, in the fall conference. I think we've su successfully achieved that under Dr. Ellison's leadership and under your own leadership. I was wondering if just you could briefly uh, 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 comment on the parts of the program that are specifically uh, dealing with kidney and cardiovascular disease. Of course, that theme runs throughout the meeting, as it has to in a meeting in hypertension. But we also have two special sessions that uh, your council yeah. programs. Could you just briefly uh, tell me about those? Yeah. So, uh, for example, the Donald Le Selden Lecture, which has been part of this meeting for several years, yeah. will be given by Dave Ellison, mm -hmm. our immediate past chair. And uh, his work is on epithelial sodium channels, which is important for kidney disease, high blood pressure, and cardiovascular disease. So that's going to be uh, an important part of the meeting Friday morning, uh, followed by a special session on that's sponsored by kidney and cardiovascular disease, the oral session with uh, the best abstracts that relate to renal physiology and pathophysiology, which are also relevant directly to hypertension and cardiovascular disease. And in addition, the council uh, provides support for young investigators right. to be able to attend this meeting. Right. Uh, and several young investigators are supported. I have to say, I looked over the session, the, the special kidney session. There's some very, very exciting abstracts that are going to be presented in yeah. that session on the molecular aspects of sodium transport in the kidney and how that can be modified in disease states. I think it's going to be a very, very strong session. Again, I just want to thank you and the Kidney Council for being w willing to participate in this meeting. I think it adds a tremendous amount of, of, of value overall to the meeting. Great. So if I could just make a comment as a nephrologist myself, um, who's crossed party lines here <laughs> uh, to join this particular council, I, I would say that this is a very important role that has, um, this council has now taken on by uh, featuring uh, the uh, 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 renal disease and nephrology within the programming and within the council leadership. It was a big step for the council to take, yes. to be frank, and I'm proud to say I had something to do with it a few years ago, and I've seen a tremendous fruit from that, yeah. because in all honesty, whereas uh, there are very good um, forums for presenting pure renal parenchymal disease, whether it's glomerulonephritis or whatever, hypertension, which is a large part of nephrology, 
is not very well featured in the classic uh, nephrology mm. uh, meetings. And I think uh, many nephrologists have felt comfortable coming to present their work on hypertension here with us. And yeah. it certainly enriched our program here. So on that note, I would just like to invite uh, nephrologists who are interested in hypertension, who treat patients with hypertension, and in fact anybody who, uh, any clinician or any basic scientist has an interest in the field of hypertension to uh, continue to follow the activities of this meeting on Science News, and also uh, I invite you to attend next year's meeting, which is going to be uh, in San Francisco uh, in September. Uh, please come and join us and uh, add to the, uh, to the excitement and uh, knowledge generation that occurs at our annual meeting.